Today, we're going to have our first discussion on personal finance. We'll also talk PT, food for thought, and I'll introduce the book of the month. I am Simon the Zealot, and you are watching Beyond the Crossroads. Let's kick it. So let's start by talking about training. The Marine Corps unofficial training methodology is known as crawl, walk, run. The idea here is that you start with the simplest and most basic aspects of a particular skill, and you continue to add layers of complexity until you're advanced or at least proficient. I'm going to employ that methodology in this discussion of personal finances. Now, in doing so, I understand that uh, there might be a lot of review, but I'm going to go ahead and put this together anyway, because uh, if you are proficient with your personal finances, a review is always good, and you might pick something new up. And if you are not proficient or know somebody who isn't, you can reference this series to get on track or to get back on track. Uh, personal finance is one of those things that if it's done well, it really can change your life and set you up for success. Uh, my desire in all of this is for Marines everywhere to have their finances squared away. Problems give birth to other problems, and uh, personal finance is a queen bee, so to speak. Beside that, you want your Marines to know the inner workings of certain matters and personal finance qualifies as one of those matters. So this week we're crawling in the next few weeks. I'll continue to develop this topic so that by the end you should know enough to be dangerous. Quick disclaimer here. I'm not a financial professional. I'm just relaying my thoughts and experiences as usual. Now, personal finance is an area that uh, has a very dangerous combination of the battle being mandatory, but the plan being optional. What I mean by this is that uh, as soon as you get your first paycheck and probably earlier, you're on the battlefield uh, and you're going to be there whether you have a plan or not. The level of success you achieve will uh, therefore rely on you having a good principled plan, the discipline to execute it, and the wherewithal to adapt to changing circumstances. And uh, in most cases, if you're not succeeding, you're failing, and failure in personal finances brings a lot of trouble. Now, thankfully, personal finance is a battle that lasts your entire life. So even if you are way behind right now, by implementing a plan, you can gain the upper hand. Let's look at the big picture. Money is the most universal way to procure the goods and services we want in life with our personal relationships being uh, in large part an exception. Given that truth, you have to ask two questions. First, what do I want out of life? Or maybe a more mature version of this question would be, what goals am I trying to achieve in life? And uh, the second question is, what is that lifestyle or what are those goals going to cost me? Now, you should pause this video at this point and think about these questions for a few minutes because these two questions will underpin the rest of your plan. The reason we're asking these questions is because we have limited resources and unlimited desires. I'm sure that you could think of what to do with a million dollars pretty quickly. We are therefore forced to choose to which of our unlimited desires we should apply our limited resources. And that means that the quantity, quality, and immediacy of our desires matter greatly. All of our decisions are trade-offs. If you have a dollar in your hand, that dollar could go towards a million different uses now or a million different uses in the future. And uh, while there are only three categories of uses 
the options within those categories are basically limitless. Now, I've broken down the three categories as follows. The first way that you can use your money is you can spend it. Spending is you surrendering your money and receiving a good or service in return. The second way that you can use your money is saving. Saving is you retaining your money, i.e. foregoing goods and services, and gathering it for spending later. For our purposes, saving is strictly money that is easily accessible, but that you've committed to not spend. And the third way to use your money is to invest it. Now, this category is between the other two, and the lines blur a bit between them, but I'll define investing as surrendering your money for the potential to receive more money in return. There are two distinct qualities that separate investing from spending and saving. First, the money is generally less accessible than savings money. And second, you can surrender the money as if you're spending, but there is the risk that you will get nothing in return and that you will even lose money. Now, as I mentioned, the lines blur a little between these three categories based on your circumstances, and you will need to determine what's what in your own life. So a uh, quick recap. So far, we've discussed thinking about your desires or goals in life and end state. And we've discussed the three options that you have for using your money. To reach your goals, you will need to judiciously administer all three options. Carelessness will derail you or extend your timeline. With all that in mind, I want to give you a concise way to review your finances. And so this is the spendometer. It summarizes how much of your total income you spent for a given time period. You can use a time period of your choosing, but a month is pretty easy to work with based on most bills that we have to pay. The important thing to remember is that you are somewhere on the scale. The scale applies to everybody. The zero represents 0% as in I spent nothing. And the 100 represents 100% as in I spent everything. You can tell where you are by looking back and reviewing how much money you've received and how much money you've surrendered in a set amount of time let's say a month. Now, keep in mind, the spendometer is not a silver bullet. It's one quick diagnostic that you can run as you are wrapping your mind around your finances. The best way to illustrate this would be through an example. Suppose in November, you received a total of $2,000 of income. You in turn surrendered the following amounts. For our purposes, investing in retirement fall under spending since you're surrendering the money to a less accessible place than savings and or have it exposed to risk. Not to worry though. If you make a return on investment, it will show up in future received money. That is a total of $1,500 surrendered or spent. Divide the surrendered number by the received number and you will get your spending speed. In the example above, you have a spending speed of 75, meaning that you've spent 75% of your received income. Then consider your goals and ask, at what speed am I creating momentum towards my goal? And at what speed am I spending too much or redlining? For most of us, even the most generic goals, house, family, retirement, will require a cash surplus that will take time to accumulate, never mind whatever other particular ambitions we have. Also, even if you can't think of any goals, you don't know when either opportunity or disaster will come knocking. Not having a cash surplus will certainly prevent you from answering. The spendometer system does three things. First, it forces you to look at the actual dollar amounts of the money that you've received and surrendered. Second, it gives you a retention rate of the money that you've received. And third, it converts that rate 
into a visual. Having this knowledge as well as determining what your goals are are two key ingredients in creating a plan that will close the distance between where you are now and the future that you desire. We'll pause here for now, and next week we will continue our discussion on personal finance. I read you, sir. This segment is my recommendation for a book that you should read. I will make this recommendation at the beginning of every month so that you have a reasonable amount of time to read it. I know I'm a week late for December, but uh, we got the holidays coming up, so that should give you a little bit of extra time to read. So this month's book, in keeping with the main objective of this video, is called The Richest Man in Babylon. This is my favorite book on personal finance and a must read for every Marine. The book starts with two men asking the question, why are we poor while our classmate is rich despite the three of us having similar circumstances? And it proceeds through storytelling to provide a frame of mind and rules for prudent personal finance. I put the PDF version that I found online in my Google Drive, which is linked in the description box, or you can buy a uh, hard copy on Amazon or look for it wherever you buy books. Something on your mind? This week's Food for Thought was said by Abraham Lincoln about Ulysses S. Grant at a time when there was some political clamoring to relieve Grant of his command late in the war. Lincoln replied to the protest, I can't spare this man, he fights. The thought here is that one crucial strength can overcome a lot of weaknesses. You always want to work on your weaknesses, of course, but you have to make sure that you're absolutely deadly somewhere. Let's move. This week's PT plan is an Indian sprint with ammo cans. I have linked the full breakdown in the description box. So that's it for today's show. As always, if you have any comments, questions, suggestions, requests, leave them in the comments below or contact me directly. And as always, remember, it is not about you. Stay hungry, stay humble, stay out of trouble. Take care. I'm about to drop the hammer and dismiss some indiscriminate justice.